Hello everyone and welcome back to our video series on the tips and hacks to work with natural stone pavers. In today's video we will be looking at a unique style called crazy stone paving or as some people call it flag stones. First I will share what these are and then we will talk to landscaper who will share the best practices for installing them. So what is crazy paving? Well, it's originated in ancient Rome, where they used chip stones to build roads and pavements. Unlike modern paving, where you have a specific geometrical grid formation, crazy paving looks like a mosaic, but it's, more, it's made from stone instead of glass. It has a very organic and irregular style, which is why it suits curved spaces, where rectangular and square formats are not as practical. Crazy paving is also very versatile. We have customers who have used it on driveways, garden paths, um, courtyards, poolside pavers, and many other locations. So if you prefer more avant-garde or natural look, it's a good option to consider for your front or backyard. You might be thinking, but this paving is, is it as durable as other paving? The answer is yes. Even though the stones come in irregular shapes and sizes, the crazy pavers we stock at Armstone are both dense and durable. So you can rest assured that they will be able to endure the pressure of the high traffic areas. Our range of crazy pavers are also available in a variety of natural colors and styles, including quartz, bluestone, crazy paving, porphyry, limestone, sandstone, and we even have marble crazy paving. Now that, now that you are more familiar with crazy paving, let's head over to chat to Rhys from RBG Landscapes and learn about the installation process. What are you doing here, mate? <laughs> mate, we're doing Pazo Crazy Paving. And um, so Pazo Crazy Paving is basically a quartz material that yep. uh, we supplied. And yeah, that's, it's more called um, Crazy Paving, Crazy Pavers, or some people call it flag stones. Yep. So what that means is just a different, um, this natural stone, it's split at the top and the bottom, so you get a little bit of a thickness variation. Mm -hmm. And hence why I want to ask what sort of mix you use and how do you grout this, how do you work with this, just to give us a little rundown. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first question I wanted to yeah. ask you, just walked in and I saw a bit of green slab. What, what, what is this? What is this? It's, um, so the green is the ladder creek, hydro band waterproofing. So it's waterproof. Yeah. yeah. And, and underneath that is our 100 mil reinforced concrete footing. Nice. So no. that's technically what we call our sub base, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously reinforced. And then we're using the waterproofing just to revert and stop any efflorescence and makes the grip a little bit stronger with the, with the mortar. So grip and, and efflorescence yep. issues to, to kind of prevent them yeah. happening. That's great. Yeah, that's um, tell me about the, um, like when, when, you, when you put those pavers here, you look at them and then what you do, you pick up, how do you do it? Just run me down like big pieces, small pieces. How do you work this out? Yeah, so generally we generally we try and lay between a square meter to a square meter and a half at, at the same time and we dry lay them. Hmm. Um, we will generally start with some nice kind of larger pieces. As you can see, that's our starting point there at the front of the path. So hmm. we started with a nice kind of uh, entry landing point. Um, and then we'll just get creative and basically infill with some larger pieces um, and then come through with a few smaller pieces, kind of like these ones here and that one over there. Um, and then we leave these spots here, which are called snatches or infills, yep. which will then come back later once we've laid the whole area um, and then get creative and infill those. So as you can see here, we've dry laid about a square meter, which I will then come through and, and pencil line all the perimeters so when I pick them up, um, I know where they go. So I'll then obviously lay this to my desired pattern, which is what we have here. Um, get my mix ready, which you can see now. Um, pencil line all my pieces, and then I can remove those, sponge the substrate to remove any soil and dirt, um, and then lay this whole area in one go. That way I'm using the mix and the, 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 um, the stone at the same time. And then we'll repeat and move forward. Why did you decide to use the mix method i mean you have a slab you, yep. you you didn't go with the glue what is the reason you went with this yeah 
with this method? The main, the main reason we use the, um, the mortar installation, or what's more known as the, the classic wet bed, is because they, they can vary, you know, between five or 10 mil. Yeah, as you can see here, um, being a split face, you can see it's, it's quite rumbled and, and kind of semi-deviated at the bottom, which then makes that, that hollow area there, it actually makes it a lot easier with this wet bed just to kind of fluff the area up and, and place them in and hit them in and get them a little bit more rigid. Because the mix itself is actually is actually quite workable, which you can kind of you can kind of see there. There's actually a lot more a lot more play in the mixture. So when I when I'm going to lay that stone, I can obviously trowel trowel my bed out. I can thorough it through and get it nice and even, and then I can place that in and actually tap it down and give it a little bit more workability to place in. Where if it was on a glue bed, um, you know you can see the thickness here at the moment. If you were to lay all these on glue. I can't guarantee that all the stones are going to be the same thickness. What is that mix anyway? Can you just tell us so what's that's the magic the, mix? Um, that's the, the mortar mix, yep. as, um, as we like to call it, and most landscapers and builders like to call it. So we generally use 12 shovels of white bricky sand, yep. one bag of off-white cement. Um, we mix that dry together, and then we add F-lock with water, which is to prevent any efflorescence and some bicol, which basically keeps the workability of the mortar and keeps it nice and fluffy and clean. When you, when you start laying them, do you do, you, um, do the pre-sealing uh, after or before installation? What do you do? Generally, generally it depends. I mean, this job here is a little bit smaller than, than a normal larger scale job. So for, for, this, for this instance, we're going to, to lay the whole area first. Um, then we'll come through with a microfiber cloth and we'll, we'll rinse and clean the surface to remove any dust and residue from the yep. quarry. Um, we'll let them dry um, and then we'll come through and, and pre-seal the top. Which otherwise, you can, otherwise you can have an option of laying them all out in a big area, um, cleaning them and then pre-sealing them and then laying them up. I see, so you've got both, both yep. ways, yeah. What about the grout? What do you yep. do after when? So first you done your mix, you laid the stone, then you put the small bits in there, yep. it's done, and then you pre-sealed it, pre-grout seal it yep. before you start grouting. I believe you do that because you want it easier to clean off. It's an easy, yeah, easy clean up process and stops yep. the grout actually sticking to the stone. Yep, perfect. And then um, what do you do? What do you actually use for grouting? What is that mix? Yeah, do so you make that mix? No, so the grouting we use is a product from Artex. It's called WJ50, yep. which stands for wide joint grout. And you can grout up to 10 mil to 50 mil which is perfect for these because the, the joint does deviate between 10 to 15 mil. So that joint, that, that grout is ideal. Did you mix anything with it or? So we use grout booster. Just again from Artex. From Artex yep. as well, Artex grout booster, which actually strengthens the grout, um, makes it a little bit more workable and enhances the color. And we use the F-lock with water, which is what we use in the mortar mix as well. You put the F-lock in the grout yep. as well? Wow. Yeah. Okay. Just a bulletproof um, yeah. procedure and method to you know prevent and stop any efflorescence you know arising through from the substrate and the grout and the mortar. Perfect. And and what about uh, then? Then you clean it and do you use acid to clean it? No. Or? Well, you we generally use a cement grout haze, which is from Aquamix as well. So a uh, cement grout haze basically has a small amount of hydrochloric acid in there but it's not straight hydrochloric acid, so it is safe to use on natural stone. Um, we'll always pre-wet the surface. Um, generally, we dilute um, that product first, so we will scrub with the cement grout haze, pressure clean that off, and then we'll follow through with stone deep clean, again from um, Aquamix, yep. which then just removes any of those last final stains. Um, and we'll let that dry, and, and then, then we'll seal. final seal, yeah. top, top coat seal. And what do you use usually from Aquamix? We the use top uh, Sealer's Choice Gold if, from Aquamix. If it's Aquamix. a natural look sealer. natural look yeah. sealer, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. if it's a wet look sealer, we use the Enriching Seal or the Penetrating Look Sealer. Yeah. As, as you know, once you pre-seal with ProBlock or Sealer's Choice Gold, you can't then use the Enriching Seal, which is the, the wet look sealer. Yeah. You have to use that as a pre-sealer to then follow right. through with Different that. Different type so of sealer. That's yeah. something generally we discuss with the client prior. Um, these type of stone, as you know, which is um, you know that quartzy kind of very vibrant looking stone, it, it generally looks perfect with a natural yeah. seal. Yeah. So we don't bother using an enriching seal unless it's a blue stone or a, a darker granite and you want that kind of sheen, mm -hmm. yep. sheen look. So. Wow, I certainly learned a lot from Reese about installing crazy pavers and I hope you did too. And if you have any more questions, we would love to hear from you. You can find our team at armstone.com.au or call our Glib showroom at 1300 560 560. 
And if you are in Sydney and you prefer to see the Crazy Pavers in person, we would love for you to visit us as well. If you are looking for help with installing your Crazy Pavers, reach out to Riz from RBG Landscapes at 0415 874 416. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and subscribe to your YouTube channel so that you know when we share the next one. Thank you for watching and see you next time.